You know, um, you're asking a very deep question, of course, and uh, like probably the answer to every question, there is something about, uh, again, the difficulty of the path. It doesn't mean we should step off of it. And I appreciate you're asking this question and you've been showing up for everything all the time. And I don't, I'm not saying this because I think you're stepping off the path. I know you and of course you're not. But you're asking a good question and a hard one. Because the question is really, when are we living our karma and using it as an opportunity to get free, which that woman was saying, and I don't know, and I won't profess to know, uh, whether she was listening to some divine guidance, hearing that, or whether she was being stubborn and non-accepting, which is as egoic as anything. So it's very complicated. Because if we're behaving that way, because we don't like to receive help, because we are afraid of opening to that. And psychologically, there's many reasons why that happens to people. So some people just cannot accept help. I was talking to a dear friend the other day. I was offering something, and I could feel how hard it was. And two things came up. One is I was going to fight with her about receptivity. And the other, and I shared it with her, is I was well into my late 30s before I realized that how, how much I was defending myself by not accepting help, money, I mean anything from anyone. I was fiercely independent, but it was not a positive quality. It was proving myself. It was afraid of being told no. It was afraid of not being loved. It was coming from many places, but it was not coming from a higher place. And who knows? I mean, I was fiercely independent, and I succeeded in many ways in life, and I had this great good karma of them being lifted and put down in this beautiful community. So I'm not going to look back. There's a beautiful song that somebody wrote. I don't know who wrote it, but many, many great vocalists have sung it. And it's called On My Way to You. And I always think about God when I hear it. But basically, the song says, you know, I've done this, I've done that. I could look at this some way and reconsider. But in fact, I wouldn't change a single thing because all of it was on my way to you. Of course, it's a love song, and, but I take it as a love song. And I don't listen to it much anymore, but I, uh, um, I always used to keep it as how I felt about God. But when our ego gets in there, and this is what's challenging, and resists uh, the help or resists, as long as we feel really tough about it, I need to do this. this is, let me just think about this because it's very subtle because when we bring a lot of willpower to a spiritual something that we're working on, that's a good thing. But it should always feel, you know, it's like the way Swamiji talks about how do we know when it's pure intuition or our ego, which is really the question that you're asking. And Swamiji gives us so many guidelines about that. He literally spells it out. And he says, first of all, if it's an intuitive process, or in this case, if we're living through some, we're facing some bit of karma, the, the result of that should always have us feel more uplifted, as if we're heading in the right direction. That's complicated, but again, the more we do it, we begin to uh, develop an awareness in our heart chakra that can say to us, yes, 
and it's trial and error. So sometimes you have to step into the place where you're being more egoic and say, this doesn't feel right. Feels like I'm being stubborn, feels like I'm being brazen, feels like whatever all of those feelings are that lean into the ego before we know. Uh, and then we say, let me come back and listen. We put that question out in meditation. We say to the gurus, I need help with this. I'm not sure. Help me, give me signs. Help me to be aware of ego versus attunement. We ask for help. And the other thing we do is that we seek spiritual counsel more directly in the form of our teachers that are here that we can actually come to and say, what does this sound like to you? Let me just tell you my dilemma. What do you think? That's what that person was doing yesterday with me. And at the end of that time together, could say, wow, I actually feel, and it was a discussion, it's not like an answer came to me, but as we talked, it was almost like a spiral stairway of awakening. It went higher and higher and expanded more into the light, this very serious issue that he was dealing with. Um, so it was in conversation with a spiritual friend, with a guru bai. And there are many people who are, um, of course, none of us are perfect and none of us are without ego. But this is an important point that I always like to make because that point comes up in discussions. But if everybody has an ego, how can I know what they're saying is true? But the more evolved we become, even though we still have our own brand of neuroses, we all do, we're all at least a little neurotic or we wouldn't be here. So that means ego that's driving us. But as we evolve, many get to the place where they can put themselves aside, their needs, their understanding their particular um, thoughts about them for themselves, step outside of themselves, and really just be with you. That's a sign of a brilliant psychotherapist, and it's the sign of a very good minister or mentor or friend. Let me think about and feel, let me sit with, what is your next step spiritually? So seeking counsel in that way is also a very, a very good thing. So we have to remember to pray before we meditate. Swamiji says pray after because we're open to answers. So to ask for help, ask for guidance, and then listen. And we listen in our heart. And it's like anything else we do, the most mundane things we do, Everything takes practice. So it's a very good question that you're asking. Without an immediate, oh, just do this and you'll be great. Just, you know, of course, I know you know that, but that's not how the spiritual path works. Does that help at all, though? <laughs>